Welcome to the audio ministry of Nanda Flora Williams. She is a speaker, author, psalmist, and coach. As you listen, be inspired, motivated, and challenged. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our podcast, um, Treasures for Living podcast. And my name is Nanda Williams. And today we're going to be talking about envy. So envy. What is envy? What is it? We'll start by reading Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. And we'll start from verse 1. And Adam knew Eve as his wife, and she became pregnant and bore Cain. And she said, I have gotten and gained a man with the help of the Lord. And next she gave birth to his brother, Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel brought of the firstborn of his flock and of the fat portions. And the Lord had respect and regard for Abel and for his offering. That's so amazing. So Abel brings an offering to God. And God doesn't just have respect for the offering, but also has respect for Abel. So that means God looks at what we bring to him. Okay, so verse 5. But for Cain and his offering, he had no respect or regard. Ooh, that's Cain. Cain's offering and then Cain himself has no respect and no regard. That's serious. That I don't want to not have re- regard or respect where God is concerned. So Cain was exceedingly angry and indignant and he looked sad and depressed. Hmm. Those are things that happen to people. I believe that when they're envious, they usually get very angry. And then they're sad, they're depressed. Okay, verse 6. And the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why do you look sad and depressed and dejected? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin crouches at your door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. If you do well, I'll read that verse of scripture again. Will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin crouches at your door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it i think that's applicable to all all sins you know you know because you get you get tempted you get tempted and then you have the option to lean into god's word into his spirit do what he says and then you overcome temptation or you know you get sidetracked and then you f- you fall into temptation so god says to, to to cain he says if you do well will you not be accepted if you do not do well sin crouches at your door its desire is for you but you you know and we know that because of the death of jesus christ on the cross in romans chapter 6 romans chapter 7 romans chapter 8 that's where it's that's why it starts in romans chapter 8 by saying there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus who walk not after the law of you know of the flesh but after the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus and if you read the whole of uh, romans chapter 8 it talks about our victory over sin Romans chapter 6, it starts by, you know, there Paul is talking about how we overcome and how we need to live and what Jesus has done for us by his death upon, you know, the cross. So God says to, 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 to Cain here, he says, but you must master it. So we have the opportunity to master sin. We have, because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can master. There's nothing that we can't master. There's nothing that we, we, you know, we can't overcome because of the grace of God. Verse 8, And Cain said to his brother, Let us go out to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. So Cain goes out to the field. He goes with um, his brother and he goes and he kills his brother, obviously because his brother is doing well, he's doing what is right, and God has respect not just for Abel, but also for his offering, whereas Cain didn't get that that respect, didn't get that acknowledgement. So obviously Abel was doing better, and he was he was pleasing God, so he was blessed. And Cain looks at him, and Cain is not happy. He's sad. He dis, he's, dis, he's displeased. He he looks dejected. He's indignant and he's angry. Those are all 
emotions they're all things lurking inside of Cain and God sees it and God says to Cain he says to him he says you know sin is crouching at your door and God gives Cain the opportunity and says but you must master it you must master it verse 9 and the Lord said to Cain where's your where's Abel your brother and he said I do not know am I my brother's keeper and the Lord said what have you done the voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground and now you are cursed by reason of the earth which has opened his mouth to receive your brother's shed blood from your hand when you till the ground it shall no longer yield to you its strength because obviously Cain had broken God's laws you shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth, in perpetual exile, a degraded outcast. Then Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me out this day from the face of the land, and from your face I will be hidden. And I will be a fugitive and a vagabond and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, if anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark or a sign upon Cain, le least anyone finding him should kill him. So Cain went away from the presence of the Lord. That is so sad. So I said, we'll be talking about envy. What is envy? What is it? So the Hebrew word is, is translated kana, and it means to become red. It's described as the redness of your face. And what it means is it relates to being jealous. You know, when we talk about jealousy or talk about envy, sometimes we just think, oh, you know, oh, so jealousy, envy is just one of those things. It's just some lighthearted thing. But when you check scripture, in Numbers 15 verse 14, it talks about a wife, you know, who sins against her husband and then the husband obviously gets angry. It tells us that in Numbers 15, 5 verse 14 it tells us that there is a spirit of jealousy so there's a spirit of envy there's a spirit of jealousy it's a spirit so in in numbers 5 verse 14 it says and the spirit of jealousy comes upon him and he is jealous of his wife and she, because she has been defiled or if the spirit of jealousy comes upon him and he be jealous of his wife and she be not defiled so it tells us about a spirit now obviously there are two sides to this because God tells us that he is a jealous God. You know, he says that he is a jealous God. So there's some jealousy that is, I would say, permitted, so to speak. Okay, so God tells us he's a jealous God. So he, God is jealous over us. He's jealous over our affections. He wants to always be number one. He wants to be our knight in shining armor. He wants to be, you know, he wants to be everything to us. That's what God wants to be. And that's why God doesn't take it lightly when we turn to idols. You know, and he tells Israel, he says, I'm the Lord your God. He says, be, besides me, before me, you would have no other God. It says, he, he, he says in Deuteronomy, he says, the Lord thy God is one God and thou shalt, in Deuteronomy ch chapter four, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. So there's nothing left for any other God. God is jealous and he tells us that he's jealous. He's, he's jealous for our affection. Now, but even though God is that way, God does not want us to be jealous and envious of each other. So we can see in, in Genesis chapter 4 when Cain is jealous of his brothers, he's, en he's envious of his brother, Abel. What starts to happen? He starts to get depressed. He starts to get angry. He starts to get in in indignant. He looks dejected. Why? Because Abel is being blessed. So my question today is, is there anyone you're jealous of? Is there anyone that you are angry or you feel indignant about their blessing. You need to be careful because jealousy is a spirit. Envy is a spirit. So sometimes people, you, you may be jealous of someone because they, they, they appear to be blessed. You may be jealous because they seem to, whatever they put their hands to, prosper. You may be jealous because they look a certain way. Or jealousy. Are you jealous of anyone? Are you envious of anyone? In your heart, do you have feelings of anger because someone else is being blessed by God? 
It's something to be really mindful and careful about. And we need to constantly be checking ourselves. Because sometimes people go and do things and, and start things and, you know, try get into depth just because, you know, so we've heard, we, we've heard funny stories about people who live next to their neighbors. And because their neighbors buy a new car, they too want a new car. They go and buy a new car even though they can't afford it. You know, jealousy. When we are jealous, it provokes us to, to anger. There's a little bit of, you know, anger there that, oh, at somebody's blessing or their fortune or their gifting or their talents or their abilities, we, we get angry. Instead of going to God... And first, you, and you cannot go to God and say, God bless me because you bless this person. Because the motive is wrong. Because God's constantly looking at our heart. Do you know that envy is one of the seven deadly sins? And if you don't watch it, it can spring up and grow in your heart. Thank you for listening to this message. We trust that you've been blessed, encouraged, and transformed to go out and make a difference.